Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with deep fried creamy chicken gravy. That's right, this started out as an attempt to make an even richer, even more decadent version of chicken croquettes. But when these came out even richer and creamier than I'd planned, I decided to rebrand them as deep fried creamy chicken gravy, which I realize is not actually a thing. But who knows, after this video, it actually might be. So for the few of you that are still watching, let's go ahead and get started. And first up, we need to prep our bechamel, which is the white sauce that's gonna hold all this together. So what we'll do is we'll melt just a little bit of butter over medium heat in a saucepan. And as soon as that melts, we will introduce a diced onion and we'll cook that stirring until those onions kind of soften up and turn translucent, which generally is gonna take us about five minutes or so. And when they're done, they're probably gonna look something like this. And at this point, what we wanna do is stir in our flour because we're making a roux. So we will stir our flour into our butter onion mixture. And by the way, we'll just stay right on medium heat for this. And what we'll do here is we'll stir that in and cook it for about three or four minutes to take the raw edge off the flour. And just to save time while we're cooking our roux, stirring occasionally, we will season this up a little bit with some freshly grated nutmeg. And no, you don't have to freshly grate your nutmeg. But if you don't, we can't be friends. I mean, we could be acquaintances, but friends, no. We will also do some freshly ground black pepper, as well as a little bit of the sea, also known as a little shake of cayenne, and we'll stir that in. And like I said, that roux should cook for about, I don't know, four minutes or so. At which point we're gonna do a couple things. We're gonna turn off the heat, we're gonna switch to a whisk, and we're gonna stir in our cold milk. And no, not gradually, no, not carefully. We're just gonna dump it all in and start whisking. And because our roux was hot and our milk was cold, lumps are pretty much an impossibility. That's just science. So fear not, just dump it in. And as soon as it seems like it's incorporated, we will turn our heat back to medium high and continue cooking this stirring until it gets very, very thick. At which point we'll cook the mixture for about three or four minutes. And you do wanna be careful here because when it gets very thick like this, it can bubble up and splatter you if you're not paying attention, which hurts, it hurts a lot. So just a little heads up. But anyway, bottom line, after cooking for three or four minutes, our mixture should look something like this. At which point we can turn off the heat. We'll go ahead and we'll add our salt, stir that in, give it a taste, of course. And if it's seasoned how we want, which mine was, we can simply reserve it and let it cool down a little while we prep our chicken. So I'm gonna head over to the cutting board where I have some already cooked cold chicken breasts. And these were actually poached in salted water for this video, but generally the whole idea of a chicken croquette is to use up leftover cooked chicken. And that's something we'll talk about on the blog, but bottom line, you're gonna need some cooked chicken, which we need to mince up really finely. So what I like to do is slice it very thin, and then eventually I'll just start chopping down like this until it's very, very finely minced. But I'm gonna stop right there because we don't wanna mince this little by little. All right, there's an old saying, the more meat, the better the mince. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut up the rest of the chicken and then start mincing it all. And because I have a nice big pile, there's more for that knife blade to go through and it just works a lot better. And yes, many people do use a food processor for this, but I've just never been crazy about that texture. For me, it just gets too fine that way. And you gotta clean the food processor. So I like to chop mine just like this until like I said, it's very finely minced at which point we will transfer that into a bowl and add the secret ingredient, a little bit of finely minced ham. Whoops, I had one small piece too many. And I really think a little touch of this smoky, porky goodness really elevates the flavor of this. And then what we're gonna do is accidentally move the tripod with our leg before adding a little bit of freshly chopped parsley. Then we'll give that a mix for no apparent reason. And at this point we can add our slightly cooled but still very warm bechamel mixture. And we'll get in there with a spatula and mix that well. And of course, never a bad idea to taste this for seasoning. Mine was fine, so I moved to the next step. But if yours needs a little something, you know what to do. You are the Patricia Arquettes of what were supposed to be chicken croquettes. But anyway, the point is taste for seasoning, at which point we'll let this cool down to room temp before covering it in plastic and refrigerating it for at least two or three hours or until it's firm enough to work with, which is what I have right here. And at this point, we can start portioning and breading. And you know I like these little sorbet scoops for this kind of operation. That way we don't have to mess up our hands too much and we know they're all gonna be about the same size. And it should come as no shock that we're gonna use the classic three station breading system. So we'll coat that in some flour, at the same time shaping it into some kind of nice smooth ball. And then after the flour goes into our beaten eggs, also known as an egg wash, if you like to sound fancy. And then the last stop will be in our breadcrumbs. And I am just using regular breadcrumbs here. 
because I was out of panko, and once those have been floured, egged, and crumbed, we are ready for the final step, also known as the deep frying. So I'm just going to do one order here, and we're going to cook those at 350 degrees for about four minutes. And of course, if you don't have a deep fryer, this totally will work on the stovetop. But like I said, we're going to go 350 for about four minutes, at which point they should look like this. So let's pull those out of the oil, let them drain, and then I'm going to go ahead and transfer those onto this rack, just so we can take a closer look. And at first glance, I was very excited, but upon closer examination, I realized we did have a few eruptions, with that rich creamy center kind of coming up through that crispy crust. And it was right about here I realized I might not have actually made chicken croquettes. But of course the show must go on, so I played it up anyway, doing what any good chef would do, hiding the screwed up parts from view with the help of a salad. I also plated these up with some spicy green aioli, which I really need to show you how to make. But anyway, I played it up and really was pretty happy with what I was looking at. But then I went in for the official taste and I realized these were way, way creamier, richer, and more decadent than I had intended. And while they were similar to some of the chicken croquettes I've had in the past, especially the Spanish versions, it really was much closer to what eventually became the official name, deep fried creamy chicken gravy. So the bad news is these didn't come out exactly how I envisioned, but the good news was I possibly invented a new thing. And by the way, just in case you're not allowed to eat deep fried gravy, I will give a few tips on the blog post on how to adjust the ingredient amounts to get something a little closer to what we'd originally intended. But anyway, I would be lying if I didn't say these were absolutely delicious and possibly dangerously so. So I really do hope you give these a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.